Hello, hello, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be starting a reading vlog for reading thrillers that are specifically about obsession. <laughs> I've discovered recently about my thriller taste that I really enjoy reading about thrillers that are specifically about obsession. And when I say obsession, I just mean about like either our main character becoming obsessed with another character or some character in the story just becoming obsessed with another character. I recently read the book Just One Look by Lindsay Cameron and this is kind of what inspired me to want to do this kind of video in the first place because this one is definitely a story about obsession and this one goes on sale in July and I just really really loved it like it was a five-star thriller for me I had a great time and so I just wanted to read more books like this and then while I was thinking those things I came across this book reel that was made by one of my favorite bookstagrammers and her username is crime by the book and I saw this book reel that she just made that was titled thrillers about obsession and I was like how perfect is this so I'll put the reel here if you want to see it but in that reel she recommended so many different thrillers that are specifically about obsession that I've never even heard of some ones that she did mention that are some of my all-time favorites are you by Caroline Kepnes this is one of my favorite thrillers that's about obsession she also mentioned watching you by Lisa Jewell which this is one I enjoyed it's not my favorite Lisa Jewell book though but two other books that I really do love that are about obsession are bad mommy by Terry Fisher and most recently too The Hunting Wives by Mae Cobb. This one definitely has some obsession in there as well. It's not like the main theme but it's definitely there. And so for this video I decided to pick three books off of this list of thrillers that she recommended. Um, one of them is going to be Rewind by Katherine Ryan Howard and this is one that I'm pretty excited about because I have read a book from this author previously. I read The Nothing Man last year and I really enjoyed The Nothing Man so I'm pretty excited to jump into this one. She also recommended Confessions on the 745 which this is one that I've kind of seen around but I've also never really heard of it like I haven't really read the premise or anything but I was able to to check this book out as an audiobook from my library so I'm gonna be reading it that way and I'm pretty excited about it because it sounds like it's like some kind of like secrets on a train kind of vibe and then the last book that I'm gonna be reading for this is When I Was You and this is one that I'm gonna be reading as an ebook and this is another one that I feel like I've seen around but I've just like never really heard about it like I don't know I've seen that I feel like I've seen this cover a lot but I haven't actually like heard about this book too much so either way I'm really excited to read all three of these books for this video and find out even more about my love for obsession in thrillers. I just think it's such a unique and specific thing in thrillers that I really like. Who knows, if this goes well, maybe I can do more videos in the future with like reading thrillers with a very specific trope that I like in the books. Let's just jump right in. Hello, um, so I wanted to let you know that last night I started listening to the audiobook for Confessions on the 745 and I'm only 26% of the way into it, but I've listened for three hours already. So far, this book is really interesting it's reminding me so much of The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson because the whole thing with this book is that we're mainly following like these two different women. We're following this woman named Selena who like finds out that her husband is cheating on her with the nanny and then we follow this other woman named Anne who's like sleeping with her boss who she knows is married and Selena and Anne both meet on the train one day like randomly and they start like confessing their secrets to each other like they're like what's all that's going on in their lives and so it kind of reminds me of the kind worth killing in the sense that they kind of like spill each other's secrets to each other and then one of them starts to kind of like encourage the other to like take action in her life and like do something about it you know so it kind of feels kind of like that kind of vibe like almost like fargo or something i've been taking notes on like who all the characters are because since i'm only listening to it on audio i'm feeling like i might get a little bit mixed up and one of the characters is like using a fake name at times too so um i've been taking notes in my journal to like keep track of it all but i'm really enjoying this so far i feel like this is going to be something i'm really going to like and it's already building up so much mystery and i feel like i can't trust any of them so that's always good but i'm on the way to work right now and i'm just going to listen to this audiobook all this morning while i'm on the way to work <laughs> So we woke Monday morning before the alarm went off. It was still dark and the wind howled. Routines and device and television rules. We're gonna eat it. Allergies. She's late now. Says well, it's the next morning and I literally just woke up like 15 minutes ago, but I want to let you know that last night I spent most of the night just laying in bed listening to this audiobook and I got 78% of the way through this audiobook. I'm still really, really enjoying this. I was able to make one accurate prediction. <laughs> 
like pretty early on in the book or like in the first like 30 percent I just wrote down one of my one of my predictions in my journal and then like a little bit later on that prediction came true so I was kind of like okay that was pretty obvious to me but then last night like right before I went to bed there was this plot twist in the book that I was totally not expecting I thought that I had this book figured out you know I was like okay I can see where this is going and then all of a sudden they just drop that fucking bombshell on me so now I'm like oh my god now I'm back to having absolutely no idea what the fuck is going on so that's always good though because I like to be surprised obviously by thrillers so yeah I have about two and a half hours left of the audiobook and I'm just gonna try to listen to some more of it this morning and maybe try to finish it today because I need to know I need to have answers because I'm like what the fuck It's the same day, it's just about like two hours later. But I wanted to let you know that I did just finish Confessions on the 745. I really enjoyed this. Like it wasn't a perfect book for me because I don't really like love the ending and like where it ended up going. I thought it was like a little bit predictable for me at the end. But I did really enjoy this story and I do stand by the fact that I think if you liked The Kind Worth Killing by Peter Swanson, you're probably gonna like the vibe of this book. Like it just has a very similar vibe and like plot happening in this book. But I do think The Kind Worth Killing is the superior of these two books if you're interested in this kind of theme. <laughs> but I would give this book like a four out of five. Like I had a really good time. I was so invested that I wanted to finish it within like 24 hours. So I mean, that's always a good sign to me. One little like tiny nitpicky thing that I have about it that most people probably won't even have a problem with is that I didn't like how there was a random detective point of view just like thrown into this book. It was so unnecessary because like we had enough point of views as it was and I just didn't feel the need for this random detective point of view. Like the detective point of view only comes into this book like two or three times. Like there's only two or three chapters from his point of view and I feel like his perspective kind of ruined one of the surprises that I would have liked to have just learned on my own because he starts telling you his theories about like what he thinks is going on and it kind of like ruins the suspense for you because he basically tells you what's happening and I would have liked to put that together myself so I didn't care for the detective point of views so I think for that reason alone too I'm gonna knock off a star but besides that I really enjoyed this I can totally see why if you're into reading thrillers about obsession why you would like this even though I don't think obsession is like the main theme happening in this thriller I can totally see like it definitely has an obsessive storyline happening in it but I don't think it's like the main thing if that makes sense. Anyways, I had a great time reading this. I thought it was great. Hello, it has been a day or two since I've last updated you with this vlog. I recently started When I Was You by Amber Garza. That's the next one that I plan to start for this video. And I only got 15% into the book, so I'm only on chapter five. So I just like barely, barely started it. Already, I feel like this book is like even more stalker-like than the last book that I just read. We're just following this woman named Kelly Medina and then she's finding out about this other woman in this small town that she lives in named Kelly Medina and she's like starting to get obsessed with thinking about this woman's life. Already the obsession vibes are so much stronger like right off the bat with this book because she's constantly thinking about this other woman and being like I wonder what her life is like I wonder if she has children and like just thinking about her and it's really cool because some of this book is written in second person which I think is really cool like I love when books do this it kind of reminds me of like you by Caroline Kepnes the main character Kelly will be like I thought about you I thought about how lucky you were to have a baby and she's talking about this other woman Kelly but she's saying you so it makes you feel like you're being stalked or something it's just it's really it's well written so far and i don't know so far i have no idea where it's going but i just i'm excited to see where it goes i'm just gonna curl up in bed for the night and read more of this i'm actually reading this one on my phone so um i can shut off all the lights and just like have a chill time mm -hmm. 
Um, so last night I actually ended up staying up until like 1 in the morning and I finished the book when I was you because it read a lot quicker than I was anticipating like you know sometimes when you're just reading a thriller and you're just like flying through it it was kind of like that like it was definitely a book that kept you hooked and you could read like the entire thing almost in one sitting so for that I appreciate but I feel like I'm gonna end up giving this book around like three stars because I feel like it was your pretty average thriller I mean I feel like this is a book that I would recommend to people maybe just getting into the thriller genre because I feel like for someone who avidly reads thrillers I feel like it's probably gonna be like what you would expect it to be or like you've probably read a few other books kind of like this but I thought it was really engaging I thought the main character was really interesting and I never knew if I could trust her or not as a main character which is something I always really like there was one twist that I didn't see coming around the end of like I think it was around part two at the end of part two and that I was pretty surprised by but I just found the ending to be a little bit like I don't know like the ending was just a little bit like cliche and just like not my favorite but Overall, I mean, I think this was a totally interesting, fast-paced, like, I literally got through it all, almost all of it in one sitting. <laughs> so, I mean, it's definitely still worth a read, I would think, but yeah, I think I'm gonna give it three stars. But anyways, this morning, I'm trying to muster up the courage to go to the gym. I just recently got a gym membership again ever since I've gotten fully vaccinated, and I've only gone to the gym with Rachel. Like, I only, I mean, I like going to the gym with, like, other people, but this is my first time going back by myself. And it should be a totally fun time, hopefully. Hello! Just got home from the gym. I took a shower. I feel like so refreshed. I really like going and working out in the morning and then being able to like come home and just like relax for the rest of the day. Hello, mister. So I think for today, I'm going to start Rewind by Katherine Ryan Howard. And this is one that I know like little to nothing about. Like I really don't know. I just kind of bought this on a whim for this video. And it's like actually a really nice day out today. And so I might read a little bit on the patio too. Huh, Tank? You want to read on the patio? Tank says yes. Mm. He loves being outside. He soaks up as much sunshine as he possibly can. Tank wants to soak up the sun. <laughs> back inside because it was starting to get a little chilly outside with my hair still being wet but i wanted to let you know that i'm 82 pages into rewind and i am loving this so far following this girl natalie who's like a social media influencer she has like a hundred thousand uh, i was gonna say subscribers she has like a hundred thousand followers on instagram and she goes missing and it's kind of cool though because in this story since it's called rewind we're like following in different timelines so we get natalie's point of view before she went missing and then we also get the present day where this reporter is getting assigned to her case and trying to figure out like what happened and like what's going on but it's interesting because the reporter knows who natalie is and it's like low-key I don't want to say like she's obsessed with her, but she's kind of like low-key obsessed with her. So that's really interesting. And we also get a few different point of views in this book. We get the point of view of the manager of this motel where Natalie's staying and his name's Andrew. None of this is like spoilers or anything. This is all mentioned in like the first 20 pages of the book. He is like the manager of this motel where she's staying at right now. And he has a camera that's like pointing into her room. 
And this guy, Andrew, who like runs this motel is also super creepy. Like I'm getting major Norman Bates vibes. And it's unclear if it's Natalie that he sees or not. It just says he sees this woman who I'm assuming is Natalie, but I don't really know. But this happens like in the first chapter, he sees a woman get brutally murdered by this like dark figure. And then the dark figure walks over to the camera and like shuts it off. And so he's confused because he's like, how does the killer even know that he has this like secret hidden camera in there? And so I don't know. I feel like there's a lot happening in this book so far and it's just really, really interesting. And I'm already like, I just have so many questions. I have so many theories. I'm just like really, really loving it. So I just have my um, bag of pistachios and I'm just going to sit here reading this afternoon. I also have it pulled up. Um, Kayla and Elias are about to do the live show for every value break. So I might watch that as well while I'm reading this book. I just recently posted my first official book haul of the year. Um, there's some interesting picks in there. It's been a couple of days since I've updated this vlog. Um, I'm now about like 130-ish pages into the book. I didn't read too much more from the last time that I saw you but i've just been in a really like weird funk these last like two or three days because one of the days i like didn't get out of bed like all day but i listened to the entirety of the plot on an, in an audiobook i mean it was incredible it was like a five star thriller absolutely obsessed it was so good and it was everything i was hoping it would be but it was just like a really weird day and then the day after that i like literally didn't get out of bed except to go to work and i was just like on youtube and tiktok all day and on youtube i've been watching this really awesome youtuber named hannah who like lives in her van and like she bought this cabin in the woods and stuff and like her life is just so interesting so i've just been like watching a lot of her videos which i've loved but also like my mental health has just been really weird these last few days and i've just been like staying in bed a lot and so today to try and like get myself out of it i'm going to the bookstore right now and i'm going to the one that has like all of the arcs because i wanted to see if they like had anything that i've had my eye on and you know just to try to like get into a better headspace and just like go out and do something i always find that like whenever i'm feeling like i'm in a weird headspace or if i'm feeling kind of depressed like it always helps to get out of the apartment and like go and do something you know because it doesn't it doesn't do anything for my mental health if I'm just like sitting in the apartment all day like it's just not good So I thought it'd be good to get out and I thought I would take you with me to the bookstore and we can see if they've got anything there Hello, I'm back at the apartment now and I'm so excited. I picked up two arcs while I was there. I got Mirrorland because I actually have this one on audio on Libro, I'm pretty sure. And so I've been interested in reading this one for a while. So I'm so happy that I found it there. And so now I can follow along in this book. This one is a thriller novel. That's all I really know about it. And then I also picked up um, A History of What Comes Next by Sylvain Nuevel. I picked this one up because this is another one that I've been super interested in and I'm pretty sure this is like a sci-fi book. It's from the same author 
as Sleeping Giants, which is one of my favorite sci-fi books. So I'm so stoked this one was there. And I've been trying to get my hands on this audiobook for a while too. So yeah, I'm really excited about both of these. But like my local bookstore, it has, they have so many arcs, so many of like books that I already owned. Like <laughs> I couldn't believe I found the drowning kind there. I was like, God damn it. Cause I just spent full price for that hardcover book like last month. I'm always like reminding myself to go and check their ARC shelf at least like once a month because I always find something there now and it makes me so hyped. I got up to page 138 last night and I'm still enjoying it. I'm just not as engaged I think and I think it's just like my fault. So I think I just need to like really sit down and like give this book the time it needs, you know? Um, but I'm just gonna lay here with my little tanky tanks. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna lay here with tank and read rewind probably for like the next hour and then i'll see if it's not raining i think i'm gonna try to take tank on like a little walk today hello it has been like about an hour or so sorry my hair is like weird um anyways i got to page 227 of rewind so i have about 100 pages left um but me and tank are gonna go on a quick little walk right now and i'm gonna listen to an audiobook um i've been listening to the good sister on audiobook like all this morning i actually started it like a day ago or so 34 percent of the way into it so not too far but i'm gonna listen to this i'm enjoying it actually which is like surprising i guess i don't know i didn't think i would enjoy it that much but uh anyways i'm gonna listen to this audiobook we're gonna go on a quick walk We literally just got home like not even five minutes ago and it just started raining. <laughs> was perfect timing, dinghy. And just like that, he's wiped out. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> You're crazy. He just had dinner and now he's losing his fucking mind, I guess. <laughs> Dang! Oh my gosh. Alright, let's finish it. Sorry this lighting is weird, but I feel like there's been something about this book that's been bugging me, but I haven't been able to put a finger on what it is. But I think it's just the fact that this book has a lot of different point of views, and I just don't think all the different point of views are necessary. Like, I'm pretty bored by the detective point of view and the, like, journalist girl point of view. I find them to be very similar, and I feel like we could have done the story like without one of those two perspectives but also like i think it's just because it's kind of boring because i'm really interested in what happened you know to the girl that went missing like this whole story is revolving around this influencer girl going missing and that's really interesting and i like reading about her chapters but i don't necessarily love reading from all the other characters who are pursuing this case and trying to figure it out because it seems like they're always like 10 steps behind what i've already read about from the girl that went missing and it's just like especially like the journalist point of view it's like she's just trying to get a good story and i just don't find that very like compelling <laughs> like personally i don't know like it's a good mystery because i'm like wondering like what the fuck happened to this girl and like what's going on so it's definitely like a compelling mystery but it's also just kind of like, it's taken a minute to get there. You know what I mean? Oh, well, it is a couple of hours later, but I wanted to let you know that earlier tonight, I finished reading Rewind. While there was a particular plot twist that I did not see coming towards the end, I just feel kind of like underwhelmed by this book for some reason. Like, I don't know, I just didn't love it. 
the way that I was expecting to. I guess I just never really cared a whole lot about the characters and like the situation but I also just feel like this could have been told in a more interesting way. Like I feel like this almost had like too many characters and the writing style was definitely a choice because we kept going back and forth between like one chapter it would be like rewind and it would be kind of like a flashback and then it would say pause and then play and then fast forward and the writing style it just got a little bit confusing to me at times but I don't know I wasn't a huge fan of the way that this book was written but I still really did like the mystery of this book and I like where it ended up but I don't know I still think I enjoyed this one more than the last book that I read when I was you but I think my favorite of the three of these was definitely Confessions on the 745. That one was actually really surprising. I would definitely recommend that one over these two books if, which is interesting because I actually feel like Confessions on the 745 has the least obsession kind of plot in that book. I just think it's a really well written thriller with some really interesting things happening in that book whereas I feel like this one and When I Was You these are definitely more obsession like obsession is more like the main storyline in both of these ones but I still think that Confessions on the 745 is better but overall I think this was a really interesting reading experiment. I think I've learned even more about my thriller taste and you know and I'm still really excited to check out the future books from this author because I know Catherine Ryan Howard she has a new book coming out this summer I believe something like 56 days or something like that it's a thriller that takes place during COVID so I'm like really interested in reading it because like I have no idea what to expect but I think it's like a thriller if I remember correctly it's like a thriller where somebody gets stuck in quarantine during COVID with someone that they probably shouldn't be and they're like trying to get away from them and like I don't know I think that's what it's about don't quote me on that I'll put a link in the description for the Goodreads page for her new book if you want to look at the actual description but yeah I'm still for sure interested in reading that one but it was nice to go back and read one of this author's backlist titles yeah this was an interesting video and if you've read any of these three books that I read in this video then please let me know what are your thoughts on them if you've read all three what is your favorite out of these three and do you find that you really enjoy three that have like an obsessive plot line in them. Thank you guys so much for watching as always and I will see you very soon with a new video. Bye!